Okay. So tonight, we're going to go down to plus three, which means a lot of things may die tonight, so we need to harvest them before that happens. So what I'm working on right now is my thyme. So this is, thyme is perennial, which means it'll come back. So as you can see, I'm just folding up the ground cloth a little bit so that next year it can spread even more. This was just originally two plants and we have reaped so much from it and it just just spreads right so you want to be careful with that but also it's awesome because you get tons so this is what we do so at this time of the year we're not super careful right when it's earlier and you want to reap for the whole summer we are a bit careful or careful or is that a word <laughs> more careful how we clip this um, but now because everything's getting ready to kind of die off for the winter we don't have to be too picky about how we do this. My husband has another technique for when we need it to keep growing. So I'll get him to show you guys next year. So there's some. And just keep going. There's a few things you can do with the time after you've harvested it because I'm sure you're looking at this like how can I use this much time before it goes bad we do use quite a bit of time but it, it's too much for us to use all of this before it would go bad so a um, couple of suggestions one is getting good Ziploc bags get the air out and store as much as you as much as you feel like you'll need within the next month in the fridge um, and that keeps it really, really well. Um, something I've been trialing this year is freezing it. So I put it in a Ziploc bag, freeze it, and that's been quite good. I think it just depends on how you use your time. But for us, because we use it when we're cooking meat, that works well for us. Um, so the other... The other way we deal with the thyme is we dehydrate it and then um, actually grind it up in the coffee grinder. <clears throat> and then we have it, we can add other things to it as well. Um, we had one with dried green onions and dill. So really it just depends on what you have available. So it's sort of like our own homemade Mrs. Dash. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that file. <laughs> it's great. This is awesome. Beautiful. And even um, the bees like these flowers. Oh, you can't see because the pile's too high, but there's some flowers on the top of the time. The bees like that. So that's great. Wow. This is amazing. So, if you have time out right now, I would suggest trimming it off because I find that once the frost gets to it, it gets really tough and uh, sometimes actually burns it, changes the color of it altogether. So it's good to um, reap what you can now before the frost comes. I'll show you my dehydration and I'll show you the frozen ones. Okay, good morning. I am on part two of time. Um, so we've harvested it. Uh, I had to work all week, so we've just been storing it. Um, it stores okay when it's fresh. So it's been, looks really good still. Still looks really fresh. Um, so this has been, I cut this four days ago and it still looks really fresh, so that's good. Um, I don't put it in like a plastic bag or anything. I actually have it in like a metal pail. Um, but just let the air get at it. Try not to like seal it up. I guess you could put it in the refrigerator if you wanted to. Um, but I know I'm going to dry this so I don't want the moisture from the fridge. So there's a couple of things you can, um, <clears throat> you can do with the time. So I've been trying out the freezing 
And so, this was from a previous harvest. It's a lot of time. And I'll just show you what the texture is like on it. And all I do is I just pull out a handful when I'm cooking and I just put it straight in. So let's say like when I'm doing rice or chicken, um, this is what I do. And you can see it still looks really good. And the smell, I mean, not that you can smell over video, but beautiful, beautiful. So I wanted to try it this way because I've done dehydrated time lots of times and I had heard from um, a friend that they freeze there. So I'm just using a Ziploc bag and when I put it back in I just make sure I get as much of the air out as I can. So I like this method too, uh, but I also enjoy the dry time I'm putting it into the jar. So I'm going to show you that. <clears throat> Alrighty, so I use a coffee grinder. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, grinding up dried thyme is harder on the coffee grinder than let's say dried parsley. The coffee grinder doesn't get upset about the parsley, but it's a little upset with me right now. Like I can feel how hot it is, uh, because I've, gra I've, I will show you how much, um, fresh thyme is in this small jar and you'll probably be shocked. Um, so it's a little bit upset with me. So just be aware of that when you, if you do this. Uh, so what I've done is I have it full here of the dried thyme, so you can see the texture of it, right? Most of the leaves have kind of fallen off and they're already in the bottom of the, the grinder. The, the stick, I don't know what else you call it, but the stick has so much flavor in it as well, so that's why I like to grind that up in it. So with the coffee grinder now, it's going to be a bit loud. And you kind of have to do this to make sure that you get everything. You kind of have to shake it up. So mine, this is just a Black & Decker coffee grinder. You can kind of see everything is kind of flying up. And I can feel it getting hotter by the second. Okay, so then tap the top because there'll be a lot of dust here on the, on the top and you'll end up losing a lot of your powder. So this looks pretty good to me. There's a couple of small little pieces, so I could grind it a little more. That looks great. Oh, and do you see the dust that comes off? It'll make you cough, so just be careful. But time is actually really good for your lungs, so if you're asthmatic, uh, that powder, like that kind of like smoke that comes up is not actually bad for you. It may make you cough, but it's actually good for your lungs. So I don't mind it. There we go. So that's how it looks. have it emptied out now. One thing to keep in mind too, <laughs> when you're doing hot peppers in here, dehydrated hot peppers, you're going to want to wash it out really well because then all of your thyme is going to taste like hot peppers and burn your mouth. So this is how much we got. Okay. Seems like not a lot, but just a little pinch of this is really strong. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload my dehydrator. So let me show you. Okay, so this is my pile of thyme that I have left to dehydrate. So I actually don't know that this is going to fill the dehydrator up completely. So what I've done is I also have oregano here that I need to dry. So if I have extra space, I can just add this on the top. Uh, this is the dehydrator that I use. It's a Hamilton Beach. Um, it's nothing really spectacular, but it works for what we need to do. Um, so you see in the bottom you have this that just kind of catches the small leaves when they fall off so that it doesn't all end up down in the bottom. So I always make sure I have that down there so you can see there's a few pieces left from last time I was dehydrating time. Um, so Basically what we do, we just take this and you want to spread it out evenly so that the airflow is good. You don't want it to be, let's say like how there's all of that right there and then there's nothing over there. Spread it out. The other thing too is that the more it's spread out, the faster it's going to dehydrate. So my parsley the other day ended up taking like, I don't know, I think it was like 20 hours, but I guess the parsley leaves have a lot more moisture in them than thyme does because thyme is 
the leaves are so much smaller than parsley. So that looks good to me. It's fairly spread out. And then you just add on, oops, add on another one and keep going. Okay, so I underestimated the amount of time that I had. Well, you saw the pile. Um, so I've just layered and layered the time. So if you can imagine this amount, actually probably a little bit more, the top layer here is a bit light, is what makes that. So when you see ground thyme at the store, you know, if you're buying it and you think it's expensive, just understand how much went into that, that bag. It's a lot, so much. Um, so last point about this is this one is that always needs to be the top one. This one always needs to be the top one. And it's really quite easy. You just put the lid on, like so. Mine, of course, is covered in time because that's what I've been working on. And then you just set this, so, so heat, I always just put it to the highest heat. And then time, I'm gonna do 12 hours. Time for the time. And then you just hit start. Okay, so we went through the time, um, how we dehydrate it or freeze it, whatever you prefer. Um, so with parsley, I was mentioning before um, that I dehydrated a bunch of parsley. And so this is how much we get from it. This is really good with seafood. If you cook seafood, it's really, really nice with that. The other nice thing with parsley too is you can make a really nice dip. Uh, put this in with... Um, sour cream, a little bit of mayonnaise, garlic powder, parsley powder, dill powder. So good. So good. Um, so the other things that we harvested this year from the garden that we choose to dehydrate instead of freeze, uh, green onions. So we did freeze green onions and it was, <clears throat> they got really, really slimy, not enjoyable for us. Um, so I have, I cut them up small and then I put them in the dehydrator. Uh, and then I put them in these jars. So likely what we'll do when we have a little bit more time is we will blend this up so it's similar texture to this. And then what we do is make essentially like our own Mrs. Dash seasoning. So that's what we do. And um, I'm, I will do the same with my rosemary. I just wanna be sure the important thing to get done as you harvest is to get it dehydrated or get it in the freezer, whatever you choose to do, uh, so that it doesn't go bad. So get it dehydrated, put it in a glass jar, and then you can choose what you wanna do. So I also have basil and oregano. I have more oregano that I need to get done, but once it's dehydrated, it's, you know, shelf safe. And then you can take your time, blend it up because it does take time. And as I mentioned, um, the coffee grinder gets a little bit worn out as well. So yeah, that's just an easy way to, you know, use the herbs that you've grown and you don't have to waste them. Take how much you need and keep it in the refrigerator um, that you know you'll need, let's say, for the next week or two weeks. Um, put, the, put that in the refrigerator and then dehydrate the rest or freeze the rest. And you know that you get to have your own homegrown thyme, oregano, basil, whatever it is, all winter. Maybe it's not fresh, but at least you know where it came from. And for us, that's really important is knowing where our food came from. Good luck.